I'm um, Katalin Kotsoy, Chief Security Strategist at Bitdefender. Thank you, I guess. <laughs> if there's any girlfriend here, I'm sorry if there's other girls cheering for me, so. <laughs> All right, so my job is pretty hard usually, especially when delivering a presentation because I have to be the bad guy. That constant reminder in your, the back of your head saying, you guys need security. Especially startups because uh, usually security is the least important thing when you know, launching a new application or an app and so on. So I have to be the bad guy to tell you, look, you need security, and I'm also gonna tell you why. But first, I'm gonna give you some numbers. I'm not gonna do a Bitdefender pitch, but I have to give you some numbers so you can get an idea from where the data is coming from, so you can understand that the data is real. Uh, okay, so we five, 500 million customers, okay? Let's remember that. We have 35 million plus blacklisted URLs in our database constantly, constantly, and we have seven billion cloud interrogations per day, which is practically maybe one per person on earth or something like that. This is not to brag. This is just to give you an insight that we can get a global image of what's going on in the world. That's the only reason I'm telling you this number to understand that the telemetry is there and we get data from, from Africa, from US, from Asia, Europe, and so on. So now that I, got, I gave you this number so you can understand from where, where we get our data, I'm gonna tell you things about what's going on today. So let's, all the startup people here, picture that tomorrow is uh, launch day. Every, you have your press release ready. You have your uh, press conference ready. Everything is set up for tomorrow morning. And your computer shows this. Technically, you don't have what to launch anymore. All the work has been lost. It's encrypted. And you have to pay actual money to get your app back before you launch it. Are you going to pay or not? Just raise your hand. No? Yes, but is your backup from today? And trust me, we are engineers. We all know you also do last minute work. So you probably have a one week old backup. So it's still gonna mess with your plans anyway. But yes, that's a very good point. Backup, it's always a good thing, especially when talking about ransomware. So this is a thing called ransomware. Basically, if you get infected, and it's very easy to get infected, you get an email, you browse a website, well-known website, that doesn't have to be something shady, like porn, for instance. And uh, basically, your, your files get encrypted, and they ask for money in return. Uh, the sum is about uh, $300, but it also goes up to $1,000. And yes, it targets corporations as well, so not only, not only end users. And this, this is something that's not necessarily new. This has been around since the 80s, or at least as a concept. As in uh, some um, um, cryptographic researcher from MIT, uh, was doing some research for his uh, thesis and said like, look, this is very interesting. I mean, we could use this legitimate process of encrypting information to blackmail people for money. But since this was the 80s, he was also saying, yeah, but the FBI would probably be smart enough, so they'll just follow the money and arrest the bad guy. However, if at some point in time, some other smart guy as himself would invent something like uh, a cryptographic currency, a virtual currency, this actually, this process could actually work because they could actually, you know, be anonymous and do these payments. And since we have bitcoins for a few years now, that's exactly when ransomware started increasing in terms of appearances and so on. And the thing is, we've been doing investigations with Europol, Interpol, the Romanian police, and other law enforcement, and we've seen fraudsters like gang members, two guys, two young guys, doing $1.5 million in a week. This is your money. You're the ones paying for their activities. And we did a study ourselves. So apparently, uh, with the blue, you're gonna see the victims who have paid already to recover the data. And with the yellow, it's people that would pay to recover the data. And unfortunately, this statistics can also be used for different purposes. For instance, if I decide to do ransomware tomorrow, I know the Romania will pay about 130. So if I charge more, they probably won't pay. So now I know exactly how much to charge. 
Um, and if you guys, and I'm a Mac user, if you guys think that you're a Mac user, you're safe. No, you're not. If you're a Unix user, no, you're still not safe because we have ransomware for Unix, we have ransomware for Mac, we have ransomware for Android. So everything is covered. And if you go to Google right now and search for uh, the following three words, read me for decrypt, you will get returns with websites that are encrypted and indexed by Google with the ransomware note right now. So you can do that, that experiment for yourselves. All right. But before, uh, besides ransomware, we have exploits. You guys still looking at me? Still like, oh, security pitch, yada, yada, yada. These things are real. I'm really sorry I have to go through this. But if you think like, oh, there's no exploits for Mac, and I'm a Linux user, and I usually stay on the cool website so I don't visit anything wrong, so I will probably be safe. False. No. You're still going to get infected at some point or another, so you still definitely need to take all the security measurements to stay safe. And yes, we've had exploits. Uh, that heart bleed there, it's probably the first exploit ever that has its own logo. So these are that important. And basically, heart bleed means that uh, you have an older version uh, of your server, and people can get there and scrape username and passwords. And you have absolutely no idea to know that that ha ever happened. And you can actually do this without leaving any trace. And it has been in the wild for years now. Might be the NSA, might be some other government uh, sponsored organization. Just, it might just be a mistake and people are taking advantage of it. Uh, espionage tools for mobile devices and for computers. This is no sci-fi movie. This is not an espionage movie. These things exist, they're real, they're free. You can get them on the web. You can either buy them, or if you're smart enough, you can just take them, modify them a little bit, and use them. Yes, most of the people use them to spy on girlfriends or wives. Yeah, well, people have to do what they have to do. But the, the other people that are interested into making money, they're actually using it for evil. Um, political hacking. This person right here uh, has been arrested. Uh, he's in jail, uh, he sleeps with a bulletproof vest under a bulletproof blanket in a bombproof room. What has he has been doing? Well, when there's elections for a presidency, he was being um, hired to tell one of the campaigners what the other guys are doing, to know all the spe speeches in advance, to know all the strategies in advance, to even set up fake accounts, fake social media, fake websites, fake everything else, to win the election. So now he's in jail because, and such well protected, because there's a lot of people out there who would like to have him killed. And killing people ain't that hard, especially when we're talking about cybersecurity. Uh, this is Stuxnet. You've probably heard of it. It's been around for years now, like six, seven years or more. It's the first, what we call, cyber weapon. It was designed to, uh, at some point in time, explode one of the nuclear plants in Iran. So you can actually do that with malware. But it's not only that. There's a little place on the web which is called the dark web. And all criminals gather there to exchange information, data, money, and do cybercrime in general. And you can find there drugs, weapons, child pornography, whatever you want. If you have money to spend and you're, you don't have a problem being uh, a little, having a little problems with the law, then you can find definitely something to spend your money on. For instance, buying guns. These are guns that are sold uh, worldwide. You can buy them anonymously. They're going to be delivered home. And if you remember the Paris shootings and the Munich shootings, the guns there were gathered from the bar dark web. In Germany, they managed to arrest the vendor, one of the vendors, because there are several. And now he's, uh, he's actually working with the police. So he's been telling on other fraudsters in order to decrease his sentence. But the thing is real. You can go there, buy guns. You can do it yourselves. It's that easy. I recommend you not to. Some of the vendors are going to be FBI agents. So just spreading a little fear here so you won't do it. But people do it, and they actually kill people with it. Talking about killing, there's also an a la carte menu. 
with the services offered by the dark web. So if you want to bet your competition, you can hire these people. There are several vendors that offer that because they have people in several countries like uh, and different mafias. So yeah, they do that as well and they offer you menu, uh, a menu like uh, how many guards, is he important, is he a VIP or not, and so on. And the sick justice, and there is a sick justice, is that if you want to beat up a, uh, a rapist or a child molester, 50% off. <laughs> so there is a sick sort of justice in this. All right, um, now we're going to talk about the future because this is the present. Once again, it's real. Once yourself, protect yourself. Yada, yada, yada. You know the drill. I don't have to tell you. I just have to remind you and to annoy you once again to take all those measures that you already know you have to take. But let's talk about the future and let's talk about the Internet of Things, which right now maybe some of you believe is just a buzzword and people are just talking about it because it's the latest cool thing on the block, such as machine learning, uh, IoT, everybody's throwing these words out there. The thing is, even though there's been just a few cases in the wild, the, the lack of sensors out there also suggests why there isn't so much information about it. But let's provide an example that happened initially a month ago, but it also repeated like two weeks ago. A very well-known security blogger called Brian Krebs has been attacked with a DDoS attack of 620 gigabytes per second, which is like humongous. But the same attack, attackers also targeted a DNS provider last Friday, well, two Fridays ago, and they managed to put down 6% of the Forbes 500 companies. So their services were no longer available for almost the entire Friday. And Twitter was one of them, Spotify was one of them, and so on. What's cool about it is that all the devices that were in this botnet that provided the DSOS attack were routers, smart cameras, and other IoT devices, no computers. So your home camera, your router, can actually and may have been part in this attack. And to go back to the dark markets, you can actually rent it yourself. It's $50 per week. Uh, this was used to be a very good business back in the 95, 97, when before big matches, football matches or other sports events, uh, betting companies were attacked by DDoS attacks, so people could not go and put their bets on, they couldn't spend money. So in order to stop the DDoS attack, they were charging you money, like $20,000, $30,000. These guys actually paid because they have to run a business. And if people were not allowed, to, were not able to do the betting, means they lost money, even more money, millions. So it works. This, this, this you can buy on the net. It's it's not free, but you can also get a free trial if you want. So this is, these are the things that go there. And to sum up and continue, and we, I have like one minute left, one, almost two minutes, the, this IoT propaganda that's out there, unfortunately, it's not just propaganda, it's happening. I've shown you a real example. One year ago, there's another example where a few hundred thousand fridges were sending spam with different parts of your body being enlarged. So that's your fridge talking to the internet. Now we're talking about security cameras. And how many of you have babies? Do you use uh, baby webcams, baby monitors? No, good for you. Well, I'm sorry, <laughs> these are hackable. <laughs> so you should be aware of that too. We have a solution for that, but I'm not gonna get into that. What I'm trying to say is that, so there's different research companies that say that by 2020 and here, some of them are wrong, some of them are right. We don't know, we'll have to wait until 2020 and see. They say that there's gonna be between 20 billion and 50 billion devices out there. Presuming now, so now we're about 8 billion people. By 2020, let's say we're gonna be 10 billion people. So that's at least two, between two and five devices per person. And these are practically small computers that you wear. I have one phone, one bracelet. So I have two on me. Home, I have a, um, two security cameras, uh, two tablets, a laptop, a smart scale, which insists every day to tell me I have gained more weight. But it's smart enough, it logs the weight and so on, it's cool. And these devices are in my network. They're, most of them are not protected. Most of them come with no security at all. Most of them even have default backdoors for them from them, the providers. They have like a uh, 
the password is 12345 or no password at all. There's been a research on smart dog knobs, and all of them had security flaws. The only one that didn't, you could actually open it with a screwdriver. So right now, security is a joke, and you're going to bring these devices in your home. If you're not going to do it, your kids will, or your wife, or your friends, you will have these devices in your network. And these are just vector of attacks. Whew. And that's 15 minutes. Thank you very much.